Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop, and one can never have enough clamps, so let's make a few more. We're going to be starting this off with a kit from Tay Tools. Uh, they make these, and they are a fantastic kit. They come with all the hardware you need, as well as the turned handles, and then all of the measurements, and all you need is the stock for the two jaws. I'm making most of mine out of white oak, um, though one of the pieces will be made out of red oak because, well, that's what I had on hand. Uh, they're all different diameters, and so I prepped them all ahead of time. Um, and actually, I had took them over to a friend's house so we could quickly run them through a table saw. I know, I send, I'm sorry, but this is a mass production as I have to make four pieces for each size. So that's a total of 16 of these pieces that all have to be relatively uh, similar and correct. So the first thing we need to do is cut off an angle. Once we have cut all of the blocks this right length, they are all 12, 10, 8, and 6 inches long. And they all have an angle coming off that is whatever that angle is. It comes down to a half inch on one jaw. The angle really doesn't matter at all. It's just there for aesthetics. So I can draw it on one end and one face and then draw a connecting line between the two. And there we go. I'm going to freehand it down. And if you always go from corner to corner, you can see it on your side. And then turn it around and go from corner to corner on the other side. And that way you're always on the side that you see the line on. And that way you're always getting a nice clean cut. Afterwards, we can put them in the vise and trim them up make them ever so pretty. There's, there's few things as gorgeous as um, on-angle grain cut perfectly smooth with a, uh, with a plane. Next, we need to start all the layout, and this is um, a bit tedious. If you're making one of them, it's, it's okay, but if you're making 16 of them, then that's a lot of layout because there are four separate holes for each one, and as I'm going to be doing from hand, I want to actually do them from both sides. So I actually have to mark out eight separate holes. And four of those holes are weird angled, so you actually have to do them twice. Uh, so that comes out to a total of 12 separate holes that I have to lay out and mark out. Now, if I were doing this on a drill press, it would be much easier, much faster. I could just uh, mark out the center point of each one, and I would only have to mark them on one side, and then I could set the angle of the drill press table and put in a stop, and I could just I could punch them out. Uh, with power tools, these things are made incredibly, incredibly quickly, um, but they with hand tools, they take a bit more. Uh, two of the holes have to be drilled at an angle, so I'm going to actually set up my bevel gauge at 15 degrees. Uh, this will allow the cross screws a chance to swivel um, so that they can move back and forth. You don't have to do them at an angle. You can keep the jaws perpendicular, but it works a little better if they have some wiggle room. So most of these holes I'm going to be drilling, uh, and I, many of these I didn't have the exact right size. Uh, I was off by a, a 32nd of an inch, um, and so I went to the nearest 16th of an inch on most of them. Uh, but, oh well. Here are all the angled ones. I can just set up the bevel right beside and I eyeball it. I'm, there's nothing specific about it. They don't have to match an exact angle and because I'm coming halfway from one side and halfway from the other side. They'll meet in the middle and that's, that's perfect. I'm going to do a little bit of trim up um, and, and clean up on either side with a chisel meeting between them and then come in with a rat's tail and really clean up the edges and make them nice and pretty. I want to spin in the nuts um, until they meet in the middle, and that lets me know how much more slop I have on one end. And then I can mark that off, and I can put it back into it, because it's important that both of the nuts end up being exactly the same distance away from the middle. Now, on this first one, I made the hole a bit too tight, and I really should have used that extra 64th of an inch, uh, extra 32nd of an inch. But um, yeah, I, I left it where it is, and it'll loosen up over time. Um, I fix that on later ones. But you can pow put them in until they're in the middle, and then you put the screw in until it's back at those marks, so that they're the two nuts are the same distance away from the middle point on the thread, because one of them is left-handed and the other one is right-handed, and that's that's how they work with these metal hand screw threads. And that leaves a little bit sticking out on each of the screw for the handle that then can go on. And thankfully, um, Tay Tools actually sends that as well. You can see how these ones are really tight, and I'm going to have to work those up. Uh, later ones, I actually drilled them with a slightly larger size. Um, and one of them, I actually ordered the appropriate size because uh, it just fit better. Uh, if at all possible, get the appropriate size, but I don't always have the, the nearest 32nd inch. 
Before we do much more, I'm going to do all of the trim up on it and clean them up, flatten them, smooth them, put the chamfers on them, because once you lock the handles on, then you're never going to be able to take them apart again without taking the handle apart. And I'm actually going to do a epoxying and pinning the handles on uh, so they, uh, um, they're not going to come apart. So once I have them all locked in place, we need to put the handles on. I'm going to be using some 30-minute epoxy from Tay Tools. I'll try and leave a link to that down below as well. Just swirl it out on the plate and mix it around, and then you can spread it on. Uh, this is enough for one set, and I ended up doing just the first one as a test, and that's the one I'm actually showing here. And then everything else was done off camera because why well, show the exact same thing over and over again? I epoxy the collar onto the handle and then put epoxy onto the threads and run it in. And on this one, you can see I put way too much on there and I had to wipe a good bit off. I'm going to run it down as far as I can or until it touches the, the handle there. Um, because I don't want to run it on too far. And then we'll do the other one, more epoxy. So now we need to drill little number 33 holes through the steel, which means that I need to get the devil-possessed yellow brace out. <laughs> this would be the perfect place for me to pull out the post drill, but unfortunately I don't have that mounted on the wall right now, and I wasn't about to do it, so I'm just going to grab the drill and drill. But right about there we had an issue. Uh-oh. Oh, stink. Yeah, I broke the first bit. Well, it's a good thing I ordered seven of them because I ended up breaking five of them. <laughs> yeah, if you have a if you have a, uh, a drill press, use the drill press. You're going to do far better. Uh, most of it, you can see, uh, you know, twisting and turning. It's hard to do them accurately. Uh, there are jigs and other things I can set up on this, but oh well. Um, most of these ended up drilling through pretty well. Um, I had to drill through 16 of them in total, and eventually they go through. And the kit also comes with these pins that you can then drive in. And I put them through from the busted outside so that all those splinters then go underneath the head, and I get a really nice clean fit on both sides. And I'm really happy with how that came out. Works very, very well. So now they are basically done, um, so it's just the last little details. I can clamp them together and make them match up so that the tips match and then the chamfers go from one jaw onto the other. Just a nice little aesthetic pleasing point. And then we're ready to start putting finish on it. The, the problem is, well, what type of finish should I use? Now what in the world am I gonna finish these with? I have no idea. Okay, yeah, I'm using boiled linseed oil. These are my hand tools, and that means that you're going to be covered in boiled linseed oil, which makes me very happy. Slather it on, let it soak up. Slather more on, let it soak up until it's not soaking up anymore. And then wipe off the excess, and then apply paste wax, and they're done. And the paste wax and boiled linseed oil will keep the, uh, the glue from sticking to them, and it's just an all-around really nice finish that, that works well. And I love the feel of it on hand tools. So yes, here are eight more vices that I can add to my collection. And I think that brings my total of hand screws up to like 40 something. And there are times where I will use them all. And I'm looking forward to using these in later videos to come. So yes, more clamps, because you can never have enough. Thanks, Dad. So there you have it, a full set of clamps, uh, two of each on four different sizes. These are kind of fun to make. They're a little bit repetitive, and you may have noticed in this I drilled them by hand. I was going to take them over to my father's house because he has a drill press, and I figured that would be really nice to then drill them out on that because it's very repetitive. And I took them over there and then realized I forgot the drill bits at home. So then I brought them back here and I just drilled them all by hand. Um, yeah, it was very repetitive. It didn't save any time to not use a drill press. The holes weren't quite as accurate, but functionally it doesn't really make that big of a difference. So um, I really like these. Uh, they actually work out really, really well, and I'm looking forward to using them. Um, now I have, oh, I don't know, 40, 50 of these in my shop, and I've had several projects where every single one of them were in use, and I needed a lot more. And now I have a lot more, but I'm sure I'm still going to be running into projects where I don't have enough because you can never run out of clamps. Oh, snake. I'm starting to sound like my father. Now, if you would like to make these, uh, they actually made them from a kit from Tay Tools. He sends you all the hardware, so all you need is the wood, all of the drawings and diagrams so you can follow along with measurements, and really, really cool kit. Um, I, I've seen a couple old ones, but it was nice to actually see a new kit coming back into service so you can make them yourself. It is a bit of a repetitive task, uh, but 
it's kind of fun to make your own tools. So you have them in stock and when you have problems, you know how to fix them. So yeah, I kind of like it. I hope you like this build. If you do have any questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, let me know those down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I can possibly get to. So thank you for that. That does help out the channel as well as hitting the like, share, subscribe, all that. Thank you. I do want to say a big thank you, though, to everyone who's scrolling over to the side. They are the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons or members who've clicked the little join button, this channel wouldn't exist. And without patrons and members, our lights wouldn't be on. So thank you for that. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewers, and not by any other company. So we're not spewing what they want us to say. We're talking about what I want to say. I hope you like that. If you do, think about becoming a patron. Link's down below. Or click the little join button and find out about being a member here on YouTube. There are special perks for both. So thank you for that. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Yeah, you all know the saying, a clamp in the hand is worth two on the bench.